Welcome back. All right, now we're going to look at a couple more areas. Uh, as you see here, this is our functional medicine model. So we're going to look at infections and nutrient imbalances and how that affects the immune system, which ultimately leads to weight gain. So the GI system is a big deal, especially in uh, Chinese medicine, Eastern medicine, and, and to them, that's where all disease begins. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of our immune system is actually found in the GI system and 80 percent of our serotonin is produced in the GI tract. So a lot of um, depression, anxiety, those type of symptoms actually origina originate in the GI system and a lot of autoimmune conditions uh, originate in the GI system. So the GI system can be a direct driver to, to chronic inflammation in the body which, which can lead to weight gain as well. So leaky gut is what we're going to talk about here. Uh, the, the GI system, small intestines, should be a nice barrier from the food that we consume and drink, uh, a barrier from, from our food to the blood system, to our body on the inside. I uh, think of it as like a coffee filter. So when you're making a cup of coffee, you put a filter into the, to the coffee pot, you put your coffee grounds in top, on top, and then you put water in. And what should happen is the filter should filter out all the coffee grounds and, and allow all the good stuff through to, to make a good cup of coffee. Uh, but imagine if you were to poke holes into that coffee filter and you put coffee grounds and water uh, inside that, what would happen is you'd have coffee grounds that ended up in your cup of coffee, and that's not very good. Uh, so that, that's kind of the analogy with leaky gut is that this barrier is breaking down from the small intestine and it's allowing food particles, uh, undigested proteins, uh, bacteria into the bloodstream and it's activating, activating the immune system and it creates a lot of inflammation and it, it, that's a big stressor which can actually lead to higher cortisol levels as well and that decreases your mitochondrial function and increases fatty liver and uh, thyroid hormones, testosterone, and estrogen levels actually uh, get out of balance. We also can get uh, low-grade inflammation from what's called dysbiosis or an imbalanced gut flora. Um, so usage, usages of antibiotics and oral contraceptives uh, long-term uh, can lead to this, this dysbiosis. Candida overgrowth can happen. Candida is actually a normal flora of the GI system. Uh, but when you go on antibiotic use, you decrease your good bacteria and then you allow the candida to overgrow inside the small intestine. Then again, once you have highly processed foods, uh, that leads to uh, low-grade inflammation in the GI system as well. Another thing to keep in mind, when there's a leaky gut, there's a leaky brain. So there's another protective envelope around the brain, uh, it's called astrocytes, that form this barrier. So when the, when the gut lining starts breaking down and we get all this inflammation into the system, activating the immune system, well, the next barrier that breaks down is the brain. So then you start having symptoms like brain fog, decreased memory, depression, mood swings, and even attention deficit. So a great test we can use is a food sensitivity test. This is a great, great test. Uh, so we're seeing how your immune system is reacting to the foods that you're eating. So we have different categories here. We have dairy, legumes, your fruit, grains, fish, meat, and so on and we can see which foods uh, are really creating inflammation so a lot of people it's dairy and um, and certain grains like wheat and gluten and gliadin which is the uh, the protein and and gluten so this can really spark inflammation within the GI or within the GI system and in the bloodstream so it kind of goes down two pathways like I just said there's there's common food sensitivities that we just strictly just need to get rid of those eliminate those from the diet um, but we also can indirectly see if there is leaky gut going on because if we go back here and if we have high sensitivity in all these different categories, well, we know that's not a true sensitivity. To, sensitivity it's, a, it's a leaky gut issue. And that can happen from uh, de decreased digestive enzymes, candida can overgrow, clostridia bacteria can overgrow, or if you have parasites. Uh, so all these different factors can lead to high food sensitivities and just chronic inflammation in the system and weight gain. So these can be major components to uh, autoimmune disease, fatigue, weight gain, just chronic inflammation and uh, migrating joint pain actually. So if you have a knee that hurts one day or a shoulder or an elbow that hurts the next day, uh, I call that polyarthralgia, uh, usually that's an indicator of a food sensitivity because there's actually nothing structurally wrong with that joint. 
And this is just another section. So those are the vegetables within the food sensitivity test. Then we have a candida marker and some yeast, uh, honey, uh, coffee as well. So different, different markers for various foods. So about 95 foods are tested with the food sensitivity test. <clears throat> So another test we can use to look at the GI system is uh, organic acid test. So it's like an emission test of the body. Uh, it's a urine test. So we can measure these different markers, these different metabolites from these various organisms to see if they're in balance or if they're, be, or if they're overgrown or not there enough. So we can look at different yeast and fungal markers. This is where your candida overgrowth can happen. Bacterial markers uh, for normal bacteria, then clostridium markers uh, if you have certain clostridia bacteria in your GI system that's overgrowing. Another test is just a stool analysis. So a stool analysis, we're looking at digestive enzymes, we're looking at parasites, so that's all this is saying here. If there's parasites uh, present in the samples that were taken. Uh, Giardia is a, is a big one um, that we're looking for as far as an infection in the, in the large intestine. So here's the digestive enzymes, elastase. We can see if fats are being broken down, uh, carbohydrates if they're being broken down. So we can get a good picture of how the gut's actually functioning and that can lead to inflammation, food sensitivities, and ultimately weight gain. So various symptoms with the GI, with GI dysfunction, uh, you, you, know, you have chronic diarrhea, constipation, excessive gas, or if you have uh, gas that smells really bad, real bad flatulence or bloating, uh, if you have headaches, brain fog, memory loss, uh, excessive fatigue, skin rashes, such as acne, psoriasis, or eczema, those strong cravings for sugar and carbs, you know, I mentioned before arthritis or joint pain, uh, depression, anxiety, attention deficit, and basically all your autoimmune diseases all stem from the GI system. So let's switch gears. Look at, let's look at nutrient balances real quick as a root cause to uh, weight gain. And on the organic acid test, there's a section that measures um, how the mitochondria are functioning. So we look mainly at the B vitamins, see if you're B vitamin deficient, and see if you actually are processing energy. If you're taking fuel or glucose or fats, you're able to convert those into energy, and you need those cofactors, you need those uh, players to, to be able to do that. Uh, another test I like to use is called SpectraCell. And it's a functional test to see if the cells are getting enough vitamins and minerals. And these are just some of the vitamins and minerals that are associated with weight gain. Uh, so we'll run through these real fast. Uh, so zinc, vitamin K, vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin A, vitamin B3, anisotol, cysteine, glutamine, magnesium, vitamin B5, chromium, lipoic acid, calcium, carnitine, biotin, uh, asparagine. So all these have a role in metabolizing sugar and fats, controlling hormone levels. Uh, so this is a very valuable test to see if you're deficient in any of these vitamins and minerals, uh, which may make it dis difficult for you to lose weight. That's it on the GI system. Stay tuned for our next video. Thanks for watching.